Yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another live stream Friday. My name is Eric, and I'm going to be your modeler. I don't really know what my title is for this stream, so I'm just going to be live modeler. Not model, because I'm actually kind of shy. And I don't know. I don't think I'd make a good model. Um, I also have, we're going to do something a little bit different. So I know if you're, if you're uh, our regulars and you come to these live streams a lot, you'll know that we have co-hosts. And I've actually got Donovan with me, which I'm going to let him introduce himself in just a second. But we're going to try something different because when I model, I have a hard time sometimes interacting with somebody who's just a voice in my ear. And so I wanted to bring him from behind the curtain and uh, let him introduce himself. And then that way, I think the conversation will just kind of flow a little more naturally for me. So let me switch this really quick and see if this works. First time we've done this. Donovan, Fingers are you, crossed. Here's hoping. You, I've got my little, let's see which way, this way. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah. We're good. Yeah, let me know way. if I need to scoot over and make some room for you. All right, no, Donovan, in, introduce yourself again. I know everyone knows, uh, well, not everyone. I know most people know who you are, but go ahead and say a few things and then we'll, uh, we'll get started today. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Donovan. I am uh, probably the newest member of the video content, creative content, uh, however you want to classify, you know, what group it is we work with, uh, team here at SketchUp. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I'm Eric's co-host for this adventure we're going on today, learning about uh, the Hearst pool. The Hearst castles, yeah. So that's, that's a castle pool. That's a great segue and a reminder that um, I don't I, I can't see on my screen. So I gave all my fun facts uh, over to Donovan. And that includes, and I want to say this right now, is that I did some research before we get too far into this. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe I'll explain it with as I geolocate the site, because that's how I like to start most of my projects, is start with geolocation. Even if I don't need it to be geolocated, it's just kind of habit. And then I think that way I'm talking to something visual rather than just my big head. So I'm going to shrink, speaking of big head, I'm going to shrink down really small now. And um, and then I'll show you what we're talking about, what we're going to do today, which is uh, what Donovan said, Hearst Castle, but just not the whole thing, just a part of it. So here we go. Okay. So I think in order to introduce what we're modeling today, it makes sense to, I could show a picture of it, but I don't know. Actually, I might end up having to show pictures of it because like I said here just a second ago, is that it was a little bit hard to find... Um, it's a little bit hard to find. That's actually where I am here. I don't know if you guys know this. Um, I'm in the Central California Central Coast, which is actually not too far from the site that we are doing, which is over here. If I find, if I go up the coast, there's a little town of Cambria. Um, if I zoom out and give you a little bit of context, that's the California coast. And we're gonna zoom back in and we're gonna look for, now the reason why I'm looking for it is because if, for some of you that um, have used geolocation in the past, if you type it in, uh, if I type it in, San Sim, Sim E on California. What happens is, is sometimes, hey, did it get it? Sometimes geolocation sends me to like San Simeon, Brazil or Peru or something like that. So sometimes I just, I just do it manually. So for those that have ever been to Hearst Castle, uh, if you haven't, uh, I definitely recommend it. It's actually um, really amazing. But what you do is you park down here in this little parking lot in this visitor center, and you get in a tram, and the tram or the trolley or whatever takes you all the way up this hill. Um, and you keep going up and up and up and up and up. And at some point, you get to the top of the hill, the peak. And that's where we call, that's what we find is Hearst Castle. So today, we are doing the pool. Yeah, I would love to do the whole thing, but that would be probably seven or eight live streams. So we're going to just focus on what's called the Neptune pool. So I'm going to start by geolocating. I'm going to grab this. Oh, um, maybe before I get too far, too, I want to say shout outs to everyone. Um, Donovan, you've got the screen. So if there's if people are coming in from across the world, I'm representing California. Donovan, where are you representing? Uh, I'm representing Oklahoma. In the All US. right. Do we have anyone uh, else representing got, any place cool? Yeah, we I got, select this. Uh, people from Syria, Pakistan, Vancouver, Washington, Is Canada, that Transom? Norway, hey, Portland. Ooh, all over the place. Sweet. Welcome, everyone. Or good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Now let's see here. What I like to do is. 
Yeah, I want to ease into this here. Um, I did not prepare for this. Now, I'm a planner by nature, so these live model sessions are kind of fun, but they're kind of tricky as well because uh, it's hard to go into something and think, wow, how would I approach this task? Or or how much detail am I going to go into? Normally, I'd like to you know practice a little bit and then say, okay, I have an, an approach of how I want to do this. But this one, I'm coming in completely blind. And um, I did mention information. Let me pop over here. Not that one. You don't need to see. In fact, I don't think I need that one. I don't need that one and I don't need that one. Sorry, you don't need to read my emails. What I do want to do is type in Hearst Castle and I'll tell you why. Uh, no, it's already there. What we're going to do is we're going to pop over here to... This is probably the best way we're going to get information. And it's using this little... What do you call this? A street view? Not a street view though because it's a like a 360 view. So I'm going to be kind of referring to a couple of these 360s for the vertical elements. And then we'll refer to the geolocation for the horizontal elements. And then I'm going to refer to Donovan for the dimensions because I actually was able to find a few dimensions that tell me how big at least the pool is. And then everything beyond that, we're going to guess. So how does that sound? It's pretty cool. Look at that view. Yep, I, we actually I, got a, a, a quick tip in the comments already. Okay. When looking on maps is to add the zip code so you don't end up in somewhere like Scandinavia. Oh, does that, uh, the zip code for the geolocation, huh? Then mm -hmm. I have to look up the zip code, but that's not that difficult. You just search it and find the zip code and it's probably there somewhere. There it is, 93452. Okay. Oh, fun fact, uh, they, speaking of the pool, they had been renovating it for like the last four three or four years they did a big multi-million dollar renovation to redo all the tile work and uh and during their sort of reopening launch party they were allowing people to buy tickets to come swim in the pool and i always thought that would be awesome but for 950 dollars us i don't know how I, I don't know if it'd be that awesome or not maybe i would do it i'd really consider seriously consider that because this pool looks amazing it would be an experience would be an experience. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that page up there. The reason why I have that is because we're gonna be referring to this this map page for some of these elements. And um, with that said, let's let's just dive into it. So Donovan, I'm gonna to look to you as I kind of get set up here in what I call my trace mode. I'm gonna start in 2D. For those of you who've seen some of my other ones, especially when working with terrain, I tend to work above um, my site and I work flat. And then when I'm ready, I bring it down onto the terrain. And I know this terrain isn't the most detailed, but we're gonna go ahead and use it for our purposes for today. So we're gonna start with the flat model. And then if we have time or depending on what we, if we wanna do retaining walls or whatnot, we'll kind of bring the information down uh, when we're ready. So I'm going to start by just sort of switching into my plan view. And I use keyboard shortcuts. So if anyone's got a question about anything, any tool or any shortcut that I skip over, just post it in the chat and I'm happy to explain, you know, why I do it that way or how I did it. And um, otherwise, I'm just going to kind of run with it. I'm just going to go. Yeah. So do you want me to throw out dimensions? <laughs> yeah, I'm going I to. Have a little cheat sheet here that you that you uh, provided for me. It's pretty helpful. So what I'm going to do here is add what's called a, um, this is what's called a trace scene. So what I do is I create these things called a tracing scene. And then I come over here and add another one. And I call this just a working or a viewing scene. And the difference, the reason why is that I have two different styles in my model. And I like to, um, I have a skill builder on this. So that's why I'm not going to go into too much uh, information. But I like to start with opening up my scenes, turning off use thumbnails if it if it's asking for some thumbnails. And under both of these scenes say don't use the camera location. And I'll show you why in a second for those of you who have not seen that skill builder. Because what I can do is wherever I'm working in the model, I can go from trace mode, which is x-ray. Not only is it x-ray um, mode, but it's also my lines are thick pink lines. So it's really easy for me to see, especially when I'm drawing on dark area areas where there's shadows. And then when I'm ready to see, like if I draw this, and when I'm ready to see this, I can switch back to the working. And the nice thing about that is because I disabled camera location, I can get in here and I can work over here. And I'm just making this up for right now. And I can switch back and forth between those two without having to reset my camera view. So pro tip number one, lots more to come. Um, Speaking of which, this is going to kind of bug me a little bit. You'll notice the orientation of the pool is off to the right a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find what I think is the, the sort of length. So I'll switch to my tracing view so I can see that a little bit better. Come over here and kind of grab that edge, something that I think is going to be 
Um, and then I want to reorient. I essentially want to reorient my axis by my axis. And in fact, I want to actually move my axis off so it's not sitting in the middle of my screen. I don't want to move this. I did unlock this. I did unlock my geo um, my snapshot in order to move it above my site. So I want to make sure I relock that. And I want to move this line down here, just kind of off to the side, because what I'm going to do is place this axis by coming up here and saying place. And I want to come over here and place it there. And I hope if I do this right, it's been a while since I've done this. When I go to plan view, what it does is it orients, it reorients. So it, I didn't rotate the aerial. I don't want to do that. I rotated the axis instead, the same way that you would do UCS. If anyone, do we have any CAD people in the chat? Any CAD users, CAD lovers? All right, Donovan, I'm ready for those dimensions now. What does UCS stand for? I don't know. I think it said something about a coordinate system. Is it unified or universal? I would guess it's a universal um, coordinate system. Correct me if I'm wrong, CAD people. Uh, somebody is, is is asking, can you please do that again? Can I do that again? Okay, I will undo it. That's okay, it didn't take very long. So I'm gonna come over here. Actually, it's good because I'm teaching you if you do mess up or if you decide that you needed to, um, to set that, you'll notice I can still switch between my trace and working even though I rotated the plan because it didn't save the camera, right? So that's kind of cool. But in this case, if I say I messed up and I didn't like that and that's wrong, I just come over here to my axis anywhere and say, uh, well, I should be able to reset it. Oh, I see. It did reset. Um, there we go. So now I go to plan view. So when you that's that's a good that's a good point actually. If you didn't catch what happened, is that I didn't save the rotated axes to my scene. So when I clicked on one of my scenes, the camera didn't change, but the axes did. I don't know if you noticed that. You've got to have a sharp eye. So let's do that again. Um, and I probably for this one want to make sure that I update my style to reflect the rotated axis. So I'm going to go ahead and come over to my axis. I'm going to say place, and I'm going to place it off to the side, just somewhere off to the side. And now I have a rotated axis, and then I'm going to go up to view, standard views, or, oh, sorry, not view, camera, standard views, top. I use these icons too and shortcuts, so I'm going to press this little icon here that looks like a roof, and top view, it's rotated now. So what I want to do is check my styles, and I want to see, no, because it's not letting me update it. Yeah, if I go oh. to working, watch this. So oh, that's a good question. Maybe someone in the chat can help me with that. Because what happened is when I switched my scenes, it, it, it changed the axes back. So if I go plan view, it's going to switch back to plan view. Right? It's going to switch it, the orientation back. So I want to be careful there. Either that or I want to actually change the axes and save it. So maybe I have to change the axes and then save the scene. What do you think? I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but it's kind of important. <laughs> Speaking like, of the chat, uh, yep, UCS is Universal Coordinate System. Wow, for the win. Okay. All right, let's see if that did it. There we go. Okay, I see. So what you need to do is it's the axis is not saved to a style. It's saved to a scene. So what you want to do is you want to change that axis first, and then you want to save your scenes. I did it the other way around. Okay, let's move on. Donovan, I'm ready for some dimensions. I'm sure these folks watching at home are as well. All right, dimensions of the pool. It is 104 feet long. Okay, I'm gonna do type in 104. Sorry, metric users, we have uh, dimensions. We are in the United States, so we're gonna go with those. It is 58 feet wide. I'm gonna go 58 feet. I'm gonna do that off to the side, and then I'm gonna move this here. I'm gonna find the center point. That way I don't have to do this twice. There we go. And including the alcove, uh, it's 95 feet. I think this is what they mean by the alcove. I don't know because, again, I couldn't find any information to start with. So you said 90. Yeah, I'm assuming eight. that that's extra little pool area. Yep, so 98 I, feet. So no, it was 95 feet. 95. So if I draw 95 feet, uh, that must be because of the camera perspective. I'm just going to assume maybe it's this lower alcove because I think up here is just a source fountain and it's not swimmable. So what I'll do is I'll use that as sort of that basis. So I'll take that. Yeah, there you go. I don't want to do the math. I'm just going to draw this line because otherwise I have to do 95 minus 58, and I don't want to do that right now. All right, so bit of setup, bit of setup. I'm going to save, right? I'm going to save now, Hearst. We're going to call this Hearst. And Donovan, anytime I'm going to start to just draw this, and I don't think I need to explain too much because I'm just going to be drafting. So maybe this is a good time to get a chat going. Um, 
Neptune Pool with some fun facts about Hearst Castle for those that don't know um, some of the history. Uh, so one of the interesting things about the castle and specifically the pool is the tiles. Uh, very, no, very recognizable, very ornate. Uh, there are actually 20,000 marble tiles and sculptures that were commissioned by the Parisian ar artist. I'm going to butcher this name probably. Charles hmm. George, George Casso. I am so sorry. I'm probably butchering that name. Um, but that's that's the amount of, of marble work that we have to look at in terms of this pool. It is ornate, to say the least. Cool. I kind of messed that oh, up and, a, little, a little bit. And from the chat, uh, hi from Oslo. We also have a UK represented in the house. Hi, UK. Hi, Oslo. Opulent. Opulent. Oh, yes. Very good. Opulent would be a good word for what it is we're trying to describe when it comes to this pool. It is very opulent. I'm Another fun the... fact. Huh? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was going to use... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm correcting myself because I, I default to using the negative one to do the flip. And I know that 2023 has got this awesome flip tool. So I have to just kind of remind myself for a second. You know, use the use the new flip tools. Fifty eight. That's fifty eight. That looks wider than the aerial. I'm going to go with what you said, Donovan. If you said it's fifty eight, I'm going to go. But if when I look at this, it looks a little bit wider than what you said. But that's okay. I trust you. So no, no. Well, I'm I'm just going off the information you gave me. In a situation <laughs> like that, do you go off the reference or do you go off the measurements? How how do you do it? Um. I think I, in this case, I would go with the reference. And, and the only problem with the reference is, is that it doesn't necessarily say where it's measured to. Is it talking about the inner coping? Is it talking about the outer coping? Is it talking about, so in some ways that reference could be, I'm gonna cheat here because I'm talking and it's easier for me just to do that cheat because it's default. Um, yeah, so I don't know, a little bit larger, that's okay. So I don't know if you guys noticed what I was doing while Donovan was talking here. I, um, I'm i gonna add one more, I'm gonna come over to my working scene and I'm gonna turn off the location snapshot. And the reason why is because now I can go back and forth between seeing what it looks like. So I made this a component. Doesn't look like much right now, but it's, it'll get there. Um, does it say how deep it is in the deep, uh, Donovan? Or should we just it does. this up? Uh, at, its, at its shallowest end, which is the west end of the pool, uh, it is three and a half feet deep. Uh -huh. Deepest part of the pool goes to 10 feet at the drains. And so all of that combined gives us 345,000 gallons of water uh, in this pool. Okay. That's awesome. That's a lot. It's a lot of water. Okay. So let me make sure I did that right. I tried to flip this. So if I pull this up, oh, why is it? Why is that not doing it? I wanted to... Um, I'm going to cheat again. You guys, it's Friday. It's been a long day. There's some flooding going on right now, so it's been a little bit of a scramble. So if I, if you hear noise in the background, it's because my kids have been um, sent home from school. And um, where I'm at, we were under flood watch. So, you know, I'm just letting you know that if I kind of sigh heavily a few times, that's because it's that's the morning I'm having. So um, with that the soundtrack said... Soundtrack of life. Yeah, that's my life soundtrack. So, so what I did here, just so that if, for those that it's funny because we've got so many pro users as are um, watching this stream. So sometimes I, I forget sort of the level of information I want. Am I talking to the pros? Am I talking to the noobs? Or am I trying to hit that middle sweet spot? And I think I kind of go back and forth between assuming. But by using, by breaking this pool up into quarters, um, or even half if I wanted to join these, it basically means that I only have to model one part of the pool at a time because if i change anything like give this if i stretch this or if i move this or if i give this a thickness you can see what it's doing it's doing it to all of them at once and that's something i learned from chris rosewarn so if anyone's seen chris rosewarn's work that guy is he does fantastic work so i'm going to set up um a tag um i'm going to set up a tag and i'm going to call this dashed and i'm going to tell you why because I don't like working with guidelines like the way some people do. Um, I don't know why, I just don't like using guides. It's just, they kind of bug me. So instead what I'll do is I'll just set up some temporary geometry 
and I know that I'm going to delete that there. So if I wanted to know where the center points are for these, I could just take these um, and take those two lines and just grab and drop them. I'll probably group them because you're not supposed to put raw geometry on a tag. So I'll probably just group them and then put them on a dash tag. And the reason for doing that is just, oh, what did I do? Did I not put it on the dash tag? I didn't. It's a good question. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So that way it's just there. And the cool thing about that is like, unlike the guides, I can kind of, I feel like I have a little bit more control. Like if I wanted to change the line type or if I wanted to change where it stops and starts. So I might give myself a few of these little guidelines and, and I know you're not supposed to put raw geometry on tags. These are temporary lines anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So pretty cool. Yep. From the comment section, tell Eric guides are awesome. Guides. Guides are, you guys are, you guides, you guides are funny. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take this arc. I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. I want to do this, like, what do you call this? A loggia? Where do we have any architects in the group? I'm landscape. So um, I, as much as I should know my follies and ruins, I did not study at the uh, Beaux-Arts, the academy. So I don't know my arts, uh, my Beaux Arts stuff, but I'm going to call this a loggia or an arcade, and I'm going to go ahead and do that because I think that that's kind of cool. And then I want to do the steps around the pool, and I want to placeholder the statuary, and then we'll do this um, sort of Parthenon um, thing that stops your eye. It's just there for decoration. What do we think the distance is between? I have to go back and forth because I have to look at what do you think the distance is between the edge of the pool. If those steps are, do you think they're Michelangelo steps at 15 inches? Do you think they're standard steps at 12? Don, I mean, I'm asking you because you're going to have to. <laughs> you're, you're asking the noob. <laughs> you're throwing out words that I honestly don't think I've ever heard before. And so Ambrosio, okay. was that one of them? Uh, the Michelangelo steps, um, it, it means that he uses a five, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat, but I think he goes five by either 14 or 15. So it means it's a shallower step and it's a longer step. A standard step is going to be six by 12, a stair step when I say step. So that's why I ask if this is sort of modeled off classical Roman or Italian architecture, which I know it's a mix of styles, then I would say, it would. should we go with, um, and I'm. you just have to pick a number. You just make it up. Don't want to act like, uh, act like the, the, the comment expert. section says 15. Said 15. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to change. What I'm doing is my arcs. I want to make sure that my arcs are nice and detailed because I don't care about my poly count here. So I, I kind of offset this arc. And then I want to come over here. And in this case, I want to um, come over here and say 15 inches. Oh, that's 15 inches times how many steps? Times three steps? Oh, that's right. You can't do uh, You have to. I'm used to CAD. Because in order to do multiple offsets, you got to double click on it. So you go to offset and you double click and it repeats that last offset. Whereas um, in CAD, you, you can say times how many you want to do. So that's kind of fun. Fun tip. So I want to repeat that. I want to go, I'm going to go one, two, I'm going to call that inside the water. And then I'm going to go one, two, three. So, so there isn't really one in the water. There's only one, two, three. That's what I'm going to do. Right. So we're not One, talking about like two, a zero three. entry area into this pool, correct? Okay. Yeah. All right. So those are the steps. And then that what that does is it tells me where this loggia is going to be. And the same thing or this arcade. Um, if it was made of wood, it could be called a trellis or a pergola. I actually don't know the difference between a trellis and a pergola. I know that trellises, um, pergolas tend to be, no, sorry, I'm just, I was geeky. off topic, off topic here. So find that center point. That's that center point. I'm going to make a little mark on that. This is almost like a almost like a drafting exercise as much as it is a modeling exercise. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go out here. I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to pull. I don't know. Oh, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to I'm just eyeballing this here. I don't have anything to go off of. I have to think about that dimension. One thing I teach when I teach drafting in SketchUp and I did that during my interiors live model in the last one is that you look at the measurements box in the corner, which is actually right there. And then you say, you offset it and you look at the number and you say, okay, how close is that to a round number? And then you use that round number. So that's what I'm doing. I have to decide here whether I want to model this in a section and then mirror it, or if I'm going to just do the whole thing. Cause I don't think there's any value in doing this as um, sort of a segmented component. So I think I'm just going to do the whole thing. That's okay with you, Donovan. 
that perfectly fine. I think you... that's a fantastic idea. Okay. <laughs> See, you are so much more agreeable than some of those other folks that I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We have, we, have, find... we have fun here at SketchUp in case you're um in case you're wondering. We we love each other. What I find absolutely amazing watching you do this entire process is the fact that when this was built, everything that you're doing right now was just it was all done on pencil and paper. Yeah, that is and that just kind of blows my mind. That is super impressive. I don't know what the dimension is this is. If I'm going up if this step is here, how come I don't have, I'm going to switch to my working style. That's why I have this. Yeah, that's, we have to come back to that in a second because I, I need my brain power for um, this step here. I want to make sure that these steps are, that I've broken this geometry correctly. So I basically intersected it correctly. Because why is that not, why is this face not breaking? It's sticking. I'll try that again, 15, and then I'm going to try that one again, 15. Nope, can't seem to break that face. Hmm. Unbreakable face. Yeah. I'm going to copy that 100 foot off to the side, and I'm going to use an extension that I like to use called Enroth Flattened Plane. Now, sometimes when I'm drafting, especially with terrain, I will it'll snap to something that it shouldn't. And or there's going to be a line in there that shouldn't be in there. So what I would do is come in and use that Enroth flattened plane, and that'll just kind of wipe everything out. It's almost like starting over from scratch. So then it'll flatten, make sure it'll just make sure that everything's on the same plane, especially when you're working with CAD files. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to offset that 15. And I know for a fact that that's going to I can break it here at this point. It's funny because we have so many. Everyone's got so many different modeling skill like styles. Some people are probably saying like. No, that's I wouldn't do it like that. That's why I ask other people. That's why I ask a lot of questions. How would you do it? I don't know. Maybe that was a waste of my time. Maybe I should have done it correctly the first time. So when I work off to the side like this, what Tyson refers to as the boneyard, um, I will usually pull a dimension. And the reason why, like a fixed dimension. I'm going to group those. I'm going to hide those. The reason why is because um, when I want to copy this back, I want to basically know, I want to, oh, I don't want to lose that center point. So I'm going to leave that line right there. So I basically want to make sure that this goes back to where it was. So I'm going to move that back the 100 feet. So I just kind of pull it off to the side for a second, and then I should be good to go. I should be able to split all of these individually. Yeah. Yeah. And a comment, comment in the chat about that. So if there's any errant triangles in your geometry, it'll show you where that's handy. Yeah, and then you'll see that when I did that, it it split these. So if I wanted to, I could come over here and use the weld function. And then when I basically pull this up, it's going I don't have to go back in afterwards and smooth that. Problem is with that is that if you weld everything, you're also going to lose um, your little corners there, which I'm going to ignore for right now. I'm going to go up six, and I'm going to pull this one up six again, and then another six. I've got some, that should have been six. Got some reversed faces, no big deal. So now, I don't know if you guys know, if you follow the forums, they'll often say, just reverse the faces as you go. What you don't want to do is you don't want to get super far into it and then be like, oh, wow, there's a lot of reverse faces. So there we go. Yeah, that was a bit of a, maybe that was a bit painful, but we're getting there. We're getting there, folks. I think of this part is, I don't really mind this part. I think a lot of people, when I see people, especially like with talking about AI right now, automating stuff, I don't know. I actually find it like Bob Ross. You know, I do think of him all the time. Um, it's just, it's, it's therapeutic. You know, I just get to kind of go through. It's like meditation. I get to go through the motions. I don't really mind. So now we've got this part here. This is probably a good time to group these. I'm going to go ahead and select all those, make those a group. And then let's pop over to, and let me know, keep those chat comments coming. If anyone's got um, some suggestions, I'm all for it. Like I said, I didn't prepare for this. Um, what are we going to do next? I think if we look over here, I can take a guess at what the dimensions are for this. You can see there's one, two. Hmm. Oh, that looks like a split part of the camera because this is a, um, so I want to kind of ignore that. I want to say there's one, two, and then there's three, four. I'm going to ignore that middle one because I think that's a duplication in the panoramic. 
So I want to create these little end caps here. And then I want to switch over to the columns. And this would be a good point where I think once I've drawn one of these, that might be where I split this thing in half and mirror it. But I'm going to wait. I'm going to do that later. I'm just going to model one side of this. So. And from the comment section, don't forget to save. Yes. If okay, so I was really... Matt, this is where I would play, play my sound effect. Save. Save. Now, this is funny because this is where I have to make, you have to make a lot of executive decisions. And I don't just mean as, as a drafter copying a design that already exists, but I have to look at this and think, well, in plan view, do you think this is parallel or do you think they designed the, the, the architect? Oh, that's actually a good point. Donovan, we didn't even introduce why it chose kind of why it chose Terse Castle to begin with. So, um, and maybe you can help me out with some of the facts, but for those of you that don't know, this week is women's. Uh, History Week. And Wednesday, uh, specifically this past Wednesday, was International Women's Day. And Hearst Castle was actually designed by Julia Morgan. So she was the architect for William Randolph Hearst, who commissioned this. And she was the one who, um, she was an amazing lady. So she was the first one to get accepted and basically get a certificate from the Ecole des Beaux-Arts in Paris, which is why you have this classical influence. And she was the first uh, licensed woman architect in California, where I live here. Um, so that's pretty absolutely amazing. And this was back in like 19, between 1896 and like 1909. So absolutely amazing woman. The fact that she designed not just Hearst Castle, if you go up to the hill, um, and just for some perspective, um, I'm going to pause. I'm going to do a little segue because I want to show... Um, you know, so not only did she do the guest houses and the main sort of castle um, estate, but she also did the grounds as well. And um, she worked with a female horticulturalist, actually. So that's that was pretty groundbreaking breaking for the time. I want to do, give some props out there. So thanks for that little segue for letting me do that. OK, so my question was, is do we do we think this gets wider as it goes out or do we think it stays? These are parallel. I think it goes wider, it goes out, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> Seems reasonable. All right, Donovan, we need to work on your, like, with conviction. You're just like, of course, <laughs> of course, that's that's how it would but be. I concur. Yes, it wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be any other way. So I'm totally guessing with the dimensions. I'm going to come over here into my um, x-ray mode because I drew this below in order to make sure I was coming from that center point. And I know some of you, um, you're like, just get on with it. Just get on with it. I'm trying. I'm doing my best. Okay. No, from the comment so, section saying, yes, wider. Yes. Yes, it's probably coming from the centric as opposed to it being equal. Okay. Thanks, guys. So I'm going to take this here, and I'm going to model this for now on top of this. So I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to set it on top, paste it in place. And now what I have is it's Z-fighting, but that's okay, because the reason why is I want to pull this up. And I'm going to guess that this is going to be about 12 feet. And for those of you that don't like my the fact that I model in parallel projection, I will change that for you. And for those of you that wonder what 12 feet looks like because you're metric, for those international folks, I will place our good friend. Um, it's Heather, right? And her dog is Lily. Is that correct? Heather and Lily. I'm going to place them there. Well, that's 12 feet. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to pull this down three feet, three feet. And it may help, actually, for this point. You guys tell me if this works or do doesn't work for you, because I'm happy to I, like to... I like to give the audience what they want. It might make sense for me to just kind of have this window sort of docked here, just for this part. And then what I'll do is um, I can switch that back later. Because what I want to kind of do is, is look at this, look at this little piece here. Yeah, so that's probably... That Matt is reminding us from the comments that that's no dog. <laughs> oh, that's a cat. See, that's I told cat. you, I warned you earlier that kind of morning that I'm having. So when I call cats dogs, and I should know the difference because I've owned both cats and dogs in my life. Okay, so that's we want right. to do... <laughs> I know. I love our audience because they're forgiving. Unlike our team, some unlike some of my no, I'm just kidding. Um, the what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to I'm just totally riffing at this point. Um, I I'm just trying to say what do we what did this this look like this little group here look like? And I think that I did that wrong. I think what I want to do is offset this. And Donovan, you can 
I could just be quiet too if you wanted to talk while I do this, if it's kind of... So I'm going to go four foot. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, remember, he's under a flood, flood watch. <laughs> so one of the one of the uh, the things that you put on this little cheat sheet fun fact list is that Julia Morgan, the architect of this pool and of these grounds, uh, was the queen of firsts. She was the only woman to graduate from UC Berkeley with a civil engineering degree in 1894. In 1898, she was the first woman accepted into the famed architectural program at, Eric, help me out on the pronunciation. Oh, I don't know. I don't speak French, but it's probably Ecole des Beaux Arts, but I, I'm i going to butcher that as well. So We'll, we'll go with that. Uh, in Paris, she was the first licensed female architect in California in 1904, and she was the first woman to receive an, the American Institute of Architects gold medal. That's, those are fun facts. That's, that's it's impressive. I mean, it's, it's impressive. If you think about it, she, I'm oh, assuming she that also, the architects gold medal is kind of like their, yeah, the Academy Awards of architects. Yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of credit where it's due. Also, I'm just a fan of, of, um, I really like the sort of merging, you know, this sort of, I don't want to say jack of all trades because some people, first of all, think of that negative, but I love the fact that like an architect, back then got to do everything right so a long time ago whether you were a landscape or a planner it just didn't really matter if you were good you pretty much got to do it, um, anything you wanted and i thought that's i think that's pretty cool because if i was if that if i was running my own shop that's how i'd want to do it all right so that's that there's a tiny bit of a recess so if i kind of pull this i can't pull this in but what i can do is i can i can grab it and I can um, copy it in, and I'm just gonna say that that recess is super tiny, so I'm gonna go three, and then see if that, see if I can erase this without screwing everything up. Yeah. Randy from the comments asks, so should we assume that she designed all this with a basic T-square and a compass? I would say that's probably a fair assumption to make. She also, I know that she set up, she had like a camp, like a tent set up. Um, so like she was on site. So she had like an on site studio. So for those of you that um, are in architecture, like that's pretty cool. I don't think we really do that anymore. Like set up shop on site. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? You know what I forgot I had? I forgot that because we try to use native tools, but then when you're doing something with complex curves, Sometimes an extension actually works really well. So I could use joint push pull. And what joint push pull, pull is going to do is because this is on an arc, I can, instead of having to do that copy and then clip what I just did, I can push this in and I can just say three inches. And I, I, that was, you know, maybe a little bit easier. So I just have to remember, I have to remind myself that it's okay to, it's okay to use extensions. That's what they're there for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got a little yes, piece in the here. comment says i guess she had sketchup seven <laughs> sketchup seven was not around back then so <laughs> this piece is giving me a hard time i i feel like i did this wrong so that's again okay we're gonna do that again we're gonna take this thing here we're going to get rid of that hidden geometry and we're going to offset this by only three inches. And then I'm going to take this whole thing down. I'm just going to take this whole thing out. I'm not happy with what I was doing. So thank you everyone for your patience. I'm going to take this, I'm going to take this whole thing out and I'm going to, and I'm going to start over. What I want to do here is, you know, what's funny about, um, I want to take these two and I want to weld these. I want to weld these together because what I'm I, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this and still respect the curve that I'm working with. This is what makes this hard. This is why I like to yeah, practice this stuff. Yeah, I was about stuff. to ask why would you weld those together? Like what because would you when you do purpose? an offset, if when you if you want to offset something like I'm doing now, like if I wanted to pull that back four foot, then then you're pulling the whole line. But if it's a broken line, it's going to only offset a segment. One thing is I wish that SketchUp was smart enough to know 
that that when I offset the line, I actually want the offset to, to grow along with the original. So hold the original endpoints. What it's doing is it's offsetting the line, but because it's being offset from a center point, the, the basically the radius or the diameter gets larger as it goes out. So that's kind of an annoying thing, but I'm gonna go. All right, see now, now by doing it that way, you can see I have this little recess. And that's kind of what I was trying to do, and I was running into some trouble because I wasn't, I didn't think it through first. I just started running with it, and that was, that was not what I was supposed to do. Reverse faces. Glad it's working. Glad it's working. Yeah. Yep. We did have a, a suggestion for the comment that if getting hung up, when you get hung up, sometimes you got to do something else. When that that ain't that ain't working, and when you come back, the problem will be obvious. Yeah, I'm gonna come back and clean this I up guess later. The, the solution will be. Obvious. Oh, easy fix. Yeah. Okay. The solution to the problem will be obvious. Now this may be too wide now that I look at it, but you remember I'm looking at this here. I'm looking at this part right here, and I also have the two columns that will come in on that. So again, if I pull this here and I copy this, I don't know what the, I'm just making all this up. I'm just going to go say that that's 18 inches, and then and I want to be careful. I'm going to use my hidden geometry. It's actually instead of copying that 18 inches, it's probably better that I just um, unsoften this line because it's already, that way it's already on that curve. And I'm just gonna unsoften that line because in this case, I'm just making up the dimensions anyway. So it actually doesn't really have to be perfect. So now what I can do is pull this one back out. And if I look down here, I'm just guessing that sort of aligns with that, the column sort of aligns with the top step. So that's why I wanted that little recess, that little recession right there. And I know I haven't detailed the column, so what I'm gonna do here instead of doing what I just did, I'm actually gonna come in here first. I'm gonna make this a component. I'm just gonna call this column um, rectangle. And then I'm gonna come over here, set that axis so that it's correct orientation. And then I'm gonna move this over to here and by move, I mean move copy, and I'm gonna rotate that into place. So by pushing up on the arrow key, I can lock it to the blue axis, and I can push that into place, and then hit enter and pull that back out three inches. What that should have done is it should have done it to both of them. So that way when I wanna go later, five more time, I can come in here and add sort of the details. Um, I don't know if that's called a finial. What do you call the top of a column? We can call it that. I have a book called the Illustrated um, Dictionary Dictionary of Historic Architecture, but I'm not going to pull that out for everyone right now to read. I'm just going to put something that sort of rep that kind of looks like um, if I just push this in and go um, one inch, and then I or two. Yeah, I'll just do that. I'll push this in, go one inch, and I'll push this in, and I'll go 0.5. You know, I get, this is the kind of fun part. Oh, what happened there? So from the comments, Peter says it's a pilaster. 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 A pilaster is, pilaster? is different from the, is that is that really what you call the top of the column? And uh, like a historic column, like an ionic? Capital. Capital. Pilaster. I think it's a capital. I think that's right. Thanks. We're learning something. If we don't learn something here today, folks, then I'm not doing my job. So if you're seeing a little graphics issue where it looks like a double line, that's because I'm modeling in field of view one. This is an old trick that I use. So I go, I'm in perspective, but I'm in field of view one. So it's essentially an isometric. But the reason why is because with, and I know it's improved, but out of bad habits uh, or old habits, I um, the view clipping. So when you work on really big models and you get really close to something, you get this view clipping. Now, um, I, uh, I, so by default, I got around that by going to camera perspective and setting my field of view to one. And so that's why if you see like, it looks like the lines kind of double up for a second, that's just a graphics issue because of the way that I'm modeling, so. And then there's something right here. I don't know what this is. I'm just gonna kind of put something right here for right now. And that's just gonna be kind of a placeholder to remind me, remind me to come back when I have more time. And um, push this back. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna pause, and I know we don't have the ability to do polls, but um, I want to pause and decide whether I kind of want I kind of want to finish this, but this is gonna take me a little while. So I want to make sure that um, I kind of want to finish this thing, and then I want to um, draw out, out at least the pool deck, 
and see if we can get to this in the next hour and 15 minutes. So I don't know. I mean, personally, if I do this right, I could do this. This It could take me an hour just to do this. I, I guess I'm not as fast as I thought I was. So I want to know from the, the group if there's something that that if that's like, OK, I get the idea. You know, Eric thinks this is interesting, um, but we get it. Then let me know in the chat and we can um, you know decide if we want to move on to something else. Speaking of interesting, uh, Peter from the chat says a column that is engaged is a pilaster, the top of the capital. Oh, OK. Thank you, Peter. Glad we have Peter on. Um, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to round this. It's funny, this is square, but I'm going to use the term. I'm going to round this out by putting this here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn the corner with it there. And I'm going to go ahead and take this as well. And I'm going to take another one of these and slide it over just so I feel like I've given do just due diligence um, to this here. That doesn't look right, but I also could play with I could play with the proportions if I wanted to. I'm going to leave it for now. We're going to say it's good enough. Yep. We have a vote from the comments saying complete the structures and fill in the details at the end. OK, so keep it simple just so that we have something for massing. And then we'll come in and we'll work on all these little details. That's a good comment. So I'm going to group this. I'm going to group. And I'm going to group. And uh, I'm going to group and group. So now let's do the backside, which I think we've already done it once. So we're just going to do the same thing for the backside. I'm just going to go ahead and take this. And um, sorry, it's not selecting the line. I'm going to offset. I'm going to weld this first. Weld. I'm going to go with four foot. And then that gives me sort of my starting point. To copy that, delete it, go outside of the group, paste in place. One of my favorite things to do, paste in place. And then I can push that. And then I can go ahead and push pull that. And um, I want it to snap to there. That's the problem with the X-ray mode is I found that sometimes it's it's too X-ray, you know. I don't know why I'm getting those extra lines. Okay. Oh, what did I do? I did it wrong again, didn't I? Didn't I just do it wrong again twice? I made I repeated the same mistake. Didn't I say I wanted to offset this three inches first? It's easier to do that than it is to to do it with joint push pull. Someone did did say that Aaron modeled the columns a while back. Maybe we could use those. Did he? For which for which live stream? I'm not sure. I, I wasn't there for that one, so I'm not sure which live stream those would have been on. OK, well, I'm going to grab these here. Come into this one. Oh, mm, I was going to say, I wonder if, if it would have worked because it's on the same radius to have used this as a component and then just adjusted. I don't know. I don't know. Aaron says right. that was way back. <laughs> that so was it must have been a while. These are not the right proportion. This needs to come out a little bit more, but I'm going to run with it. We've got something. We've got something, a starting point. The other thing we can do is we can take this here and we can make this whole thing a component. I'm not naming it. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make a copy of this. I want to grab this edge here and I'm going to go swing all the way around. And if I do this right, it's going to snap right into place. Although I didn't really want it to snap right there because I want that little sort of three inch gap. But I'm going to shift that later because we're going to move on. We're going to keep things. We're going to try and keep things interesting here, folks. Yep, Aaron is chiming up and says, hands off my columns, get your own. Aaron, teamwork. Teamwork, my friend. I'm going to make sure these are saying isometric view must be driving Aaron crazy. Yeah, I'm going to change. Oh, it does. It drives Tyson crazy, too. Uh, I see we can't do a poll, but I want to know how many other people just cannot model in ISO and want to model in perspective. There. Give the people what they want. That's what I've learned. I've actually learned the opposite. I've learned happy wife, happy life. That's sort of the thing. The only thing I've sort of learned in my tenure. And I've learned it the hard way through lots of trial and error.
I just got personal there. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What do we think? Uh, it's not perfect proportions, but we're also, um, I want to move on to the columns and I want to move on to the little baluster, the little top piece, the little, um, what looks like a little balcony. So, and then we yep. can do the little, um, we can do, these are called dentals, by the way, because they look like teeth. Those are these little things that look like little squares underneath it. Um, and then, um, yeah, so let's go do these columns. First thing I want to do is count them. One, two, three, four, five, six columns. So what I want to do is make a column. So I want to make one right now. And I'm not even too worried about the proportion or anything like that, because we already talked about as a group that we can just make one and then we can come back in at detail later. So I don't want to snap to... And we to... do have a poll going on in the comment section right now of what is your preferred modeling camera settings? Is it perspective, parallel projection, or one degree FOV? So jump to the poll, let us know. I don't think anyone's going to say one because I, I can't imagine that that anyone else models in one. So far, it looks like 86% prefer perspective, 13% parallel projection, and just you, you called it 0%, 0%. One degree FOV. Yeah, well. Trailblazer, you know, it's tough when you're, you know, when you're really trying to change the world, you know, do it on your own. So now I need to think about how far, in fact, I'm going to go look behind, I'm going to go back out because I think I have a view here, also just to mix it up a little bit, I think I have a view standing inside, sort of a little bit closer. So these sit, I'm going to say, just inside of there. So depending on what this radius is, if this is, a, let's just say that's a foot radius, uh, maybe it's less than that. Maybe it's nine inches. Um, let's say it's a foot and it's just inside that top step. So I want to know that for two reasons, because it's going to tell me it's going to tell me where to place my guideline. This is my guideline here. Um, and I want to weld that because what I want to do is make sure, because I said earlier, when you offset, you want to make sure you're offsetting everything at once. So I want to pull that in, first of all, the three inches to sort of represent that edge, the little toe or the, the nose. And then I want to put that in again. I'm going to go six inches. Actually, I'm going to go, maybe it's bigger than that. Maybe it's, I don't know, let's try six inches. So that's, that's, did I get that? Uh, I think I need to do that, six inches. And it should be bigger. But that is six inches Speaking right there. Speaking of cameras, uh, someone's asking, there are different camera settings? So can you show us real quick how we could change those different camera settings? Yes, there's actually a new, in 2023, we've got a new button. It used to be the same as like the zoom. You could change, basically, um, it looked like a magnifying glass. It was this one, but you could enter what's called FOV. So if you look at the bottom corner, which is right there in my measurements box, because it's, um, it says FOV 35. So that's the camera lens. It's how narrow or how wide it is. So ISO means essentially is the same as an FOV zero which you can't get to by, by hitting this, you can come up here to say parallel projection. So when we use the word ISO, um, we also mean parallel projection. And then um, when we say perspective, that means that the, we have vanishing points. So there's no vanishing points here anymore. You'll notice that if I go in and look at it in um, elevation view, it's what how you would show a, a section cut or an a proper elevation. There's no vanishing points. Now to switch that, to change that over to camera perspective, you can now you have vanishing points, you have the horizon. And the way that you could change the field of view is a new icon. It looks like an eyeball with sort of like a, you know, field of view, little arrows. And you can change that by typing in something like 60, which gives you a much wider field of view. Or you could come in here and say something like, like 10, and it gives you a narrow field of view. So if you really like sort of what the eye sees, the human eye, you might want to go somewhere between 40 and 50. So I'll say 45. And that's just something that's going to be a little bit wider. It's a little bit more natural to the way the eyes. But when you do that, though, you're going to see that when I use my, because I don't have a, I do have a space mouse, but I don't really use it. So sometimes that zoom goes, do you see that? That's why I change it to one, because I don't, I know that's hard for you, for some of you at home to see me do that a lot. So I go into my field of view and I enter one. So that way, when I zoom, I get sort of a little bit more of a, of a graceful zoom. All right. Great question. I want to get back to my column. So for this one, I, if, if I was in my 
teaching mode, I would say, okay, class, you know, what's a good way to array this? I basically want to array this column, but on a curve. And, um, and I would ask, I would ask my students, you know, how do you do that? In this case, I'm going to hide this so we can look at it in plan view. If you want to see that, we can look at it in plan view. I've got this curve and I've got this column. And what I want to do is I want to place, how many did I say? Did I say eight? One, six. two, three, four, five, six. I said six. Okay, so six. What I want to do is I want to array six of them along that. There's an extension called path copy, which is great. Path copy it says select the component that you want to array. And it's going to array them. The problem what it's going to do is that it's going to array by distance. It's not going to tell you array equally space along this line. So I want to undo that. I'm going to undo that. And I want to come over here and say, what is the length of that curve? So I come into entity info. It says 42, 7. I'm just going to say 42 and a half just to keep things, maybe make it a little bit easier. So 42.5. And I want to divide this by six equal columns divided by six. That means it's a space of 7.0833 repeat. And that's the distance that I need to set. So what I'm going to do is do that path copy again, extensions path copy. And it's going to say, select the group that you want to copy, the column. And this time, instead of 10 foot as the distance, I'm going to say 7.0833333 repeat. No, not inches. 7.0833333 feet. And what you're going to get is I can delete that first one. That was just a temporary one. And I can delete the temporary ones, the one on the ends. And I should have one, two, three, four, five. And the reason why that's wrong is because you're not counting the columns. You're counting the spaces between the columns, and that's going to set the distance. I love it when I'm teaching and some of my students call me out and say, uh, no, that's wrong. That's only six columns. Or that's five columns, not six. So you enter that same number, which was, what was that number again? 42 and a half. 42.5 divided by seven spaces. So 6.07 feet. We're going to try that again. I want to leave one of these here. And select the line extensions path copy. And we're going to select this. And we're this time we're going to say um, 6.0714. 6.0714. Aaron's, I can see him behind. He's like shaking his head and saying, come on, Eric, you can do better than this. <laughs> um, there we go. So the funny thing about that is I, I, I did a, 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 I did a nonlinear scale. So I scaled the outside of the container and then I used path copy. And when path copy pulled that component from my components window, it brought that scale back. So if you do a, a if you scale the outside of the container and then you place that component or you copy that component, it's going to place the original one because I didn't scale the inside of the component. So fun tip, pro tip, you basically want to make sure that you, um, yeah, you want to make sure that you're um, scaling on the inside of that column, not the outside. Randy from the comments is asking, what about rotate copy from the center point of the arc. Oh yeah, rotate copy. That would be way easier. Well, here's the thing with that. The only thing, yeah, we could do it that way. I'll show you that way because that's a great idea. The only reason is I'm used to doing it this way is because I'm not always doing it on such a clean arc. I use path copy because in landscape we have trees that follow roads, but it's not it's, it's not like it's a clean arc. It's usually a, a multi-point arc. So it's a two-point arc or a joined arc. So in that way, way, you want the trees to follow m m several arcs. So I showed you path copy, but I'm going to go ahead and group these and hide these. Um, I'm going to copy one of them. And shortcut, I'm going to come over here and select all instances, group and hide, and paste in place. So the other way to do that would be to come over here, and if you knew the distance um, for one of them, uh, you could come in and say, okay, I know this is 6.07 feet, so I'm going to just mark where that one is. I know that one's correct. And then you come over here, use the rotate tool, the rotate copy. You come over here and you pull that and you find whatever that point is, whatever 6.7 feet. You need to mark that. You need to know where you're going at first. And then you hit divide by, in this case, I want to say divide by five. And that's going to give me one, two, three, four, five, six columns. That actually was way faster, but you do have to know where your stop, your stop and start endpoints are, and you have to make sure you have a uniform curve, and then you can do it that way. So either Good. way, we're doing math. Either way, we're doing math. Yeah, got to do math with three D modeling. 
I know my roof isn't clean here, but I'm I'm going to clean that up later because I'm going to be looking at this on the ground. We're going to clean that up in a second. Let's do that one more time. I'm going to take this here, and I'm going to off. I'm going to join this, and I'm going to offset this. Doing okay on time. I'm going to offset this six inches, and then I'm going to offset this again. It's hard sometimes when I wish sometimes you could toggle this bounding box off because depending on your view angle this little like component bounding box makes it difficult um, to see what you're doing so that's just me though so now i have this arc here and i need to make sure that i break it so it's broken here so that I, it's not going through if i go on x-ray mode i want to make sure it doesn't continue so i have just that arc and then i want to come over here and i want to do that same thing and actually could have done was it Randy's method? Whose method was that? I could do that here by saying this is 63.5 foot. And we're doing six columns again. 63.5 divided by not six. Remember, I'm doing spaces. Seven, 9.07. So I'm going to come over here, place that there, grab a column, um, grab the line, extensions path copy, and select the column and type in 9.0714. I think if you're like once you're in the flow, um, 9.0714 foot. I think when you're in the flow and, and you've been doing this a while, it's it's super fast. It's just that like when you haven't used it in a while and you're live and you're talking through it, sometimes it's a little bit can be a little bit clumsy for me. I'm gonna offset. I'm gonna offset this. And we're gonna go with three. And I'm going to pull this up just to sort of feels like a column. And I'm not going to add any more detail to it than that for now. Okay, it just feels more like a column. That works. Thanks. Yeah. And then I want to copy this up. I'm using x-ray mode. And I'm going to lock my copy uh, angle to 1. And I want to copy that up. And then it should be... There it is. So now I have the copy um, at the top and bottom. If I was smart, uh, I would probably have made that a component. Or would I, um, because in that, but actually, you know what? Maybe that's not smart because the tops are actually different from the bottoms. So maybe it's okay. Camera, field of view, 35, just to kind of get a sense of what that's starting to look like. I don't know. This looks cool. I think so. Are we doing it's okay? There. It's looking good. It's getting there. Yeah, it's getting there. It needs a little bit of work. Let's do um, the top, and then I want to finish this off and move on to something else. So the top is going to be, I'm just going to sort of off, I'm going to sort of create the railing on the top. I'm going to sort of, I'm going to, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to offset in, I'm going to push pull up, and then I'm going to copy. And then what we'll do is we'll fill the spaces in between, either using the component array, the protractor tool, or using the path copy, depending on how we want to do that. Now, if we wanted to, if we if we weren't being super particular, we could grab this whole section, and then we could model that just as a segment, a section, as a component section, and then copy that. So that way, we don't have to do things individually. So it depends depends on how we want to do it. And then, did I leave? Hmm. That's I'm a going... good segue into a reminder to save. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, people, for looking out, uh, looking after me, looking out for me. I'm going to take that in six inches. I'm going to push this up. What do you think? I'm um, six inches. It's... Sounds good. Now, some people might be saying, well, why don't you use photo match? And it's like, well, photo match, you would you need an angle. It's going to be hard, I think, on something with a curve like this. The other thing is, is that, you know, not having taken the photo myself, it's like you've got these panoramics where you don't know what the field of view is. I personally think photo match would be difficult to try to do this. But, you know, again, I love that there's more than one way to do something. Somebody might say, oh, no, actually, this would be perfect for photo match. I'm going to go up a little bit higher. And then, yeah. I know my geometry is not clean. If I really wanted to, um, I would go in here and I would hide these seams because I know that's a component. So we'll get to that later. But if you see that, you know, just keep in mind that I'm aware of the fact that these components are, have edges that bump up against each other. And I'm going to go ahead and just let that go for now. Group that. Oh, that's weird. Got kind of a stray got kind of a stray edge. Don't know where that came from. Hmm. 
Yeah. Because usually you should be able to triple click. See? I, somehow I copied when I copied this up. Somehow I picked up a stray edge and didn't, didn't, didn't realize that. So we're going to go ahead and copy. I'm going to take this, this and I'm going to copy it up and make the railing. And then we're going to make a component. And we'll just, oh, this would be good because we get to use the follow me tool. Copy that. Copy that. Roger that. Move this up three feet. Now, if I was doing this right, I would be doing this um, proportionally because this probably follows like a golden ratio where this is probably, I would guess that this could be, um, so each one of these things that I'm saying, oh, that looks like six inches and oh, that looks like a foot and that looks like that. And there would probably be more, um, more to it than that, but I'm just, we're just going. Let's go with um, two foot, one foot. Two foot, one foot, two foot, red foot, blue foot. Lawrence uh, in the comments is saying the top steps out first. Question mark. The top steps out first. What does that mean? I'm not sure. Do you know? I'm not sure. I figured that's why it was a question. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Peter um, says I would start with follow me for the entire entablature and the railing and then take out parts for the balusters and add pedestals. Oh, okay. Entablature, did Entablature. I pronounce that right? Entablature. I think okay. you did. I'm learning all sorts of new things. Yeah, if I if I was doing this proper, I, we would have a little dictionary um, going. Entablature. Did I spell that right? It is a horizontal continuous lintel on a classical building supported by a column or wall comprising of the architrave, the frieze, and the cornice. So there you guys, there you guys go. What I want to do is so you do the follow me on the whole thing. You could do the fault. You're right. If you're gonna do a really fancy profile, the re I'm just doing this as sort of um sort of simple, but if you were gonna go and do this, all of these reveals. Like you see how it punches up and then it has a curve and it steps back. If we were going to do this proper, what we would do is we'd draw this profile and we'd do the whole thing knowing that we were going to have to punch a gap out for the balusters. And then you'd follow me on the on the, the whole thing. So I'll give you an example of what he's probably talking about. What I think he's um, what talking about is basically start with, um, I'm going to start with a trick that I learned from my good friend Tyson is you come over here, and if I was wanted something like this, I'm going to do it this way. And maybe it had something like this, and like that, and like that. I'm kind of, whoa. The reason why I'm drawing it on the face is because of what just happened. Um, when you're just drawing in, in the air, it's really easy to, it's really easy to draw off axis. And so that's kind of why I'm, that's kind of why Tyson recommended drawing a little bit of a plane first. So assuming that like, um, assuming that it looks something like this. If that could be our profile, and I just totally made this up because I just wanted to do it for the example. And then I would come over here and I'd say, okay, let's get this, let's start with getting this in alignment to here. So I'm going to draw a guideline by using inferencing. So I'll set that line out. And then I'm going to rotate this just so that I know that I'm starting sort of with the correct orientation. I know this is not right, so please just ignore that. I'm just doing it for the demo because it's a pretty cool idea. I want to make sure that it shows up, that we kind of try and give it justice. So um, select that face, come over here to follow me and click that. And what you're going to do <clears throat> If it was done right, what you're going to do is you're going to get a really a much more complex uh, detail as opposed to doing it in pieces. So I think that's what he's referring to. Yeah, that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. That's a way to do it. That's a way to do it. I'm going to do. I'm going to go. To I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just draw. Turn on my hidden geometry. Not my hidden objects. My hidden geometry. And I'm gonna come in here and draw a rectangle. Um, I just want kind of a rectangle to represent these little boxes and I'll figure out how many they are. And we'll do that in a second. Fun with math, folks, fun with math today. Math with Eric. 
and just eyeball that. We've got a component. Enter it by hitting enter so I don't double click. Sometimes when I double click into stuff, it um, like if you double click into things, sometimes I accidentally double click into the thing behind it. And that kind of messes me up, especially when you're using x-ray mode. So I, I select it and hit enter or return on the keyboard. And it gets me in a little bit faster. I don't know why I lost that there. I'm going to do this one over again. And hope that I hope that that does it right this time. Yeah. So since that's a component, I want to change the axis. I'll give you a little tip here. If you come over to model info, you can see a component's axis by turning it on over here under show component axis under model info. And you can't really see it because of the bounding box was blocking it, but there it is. Now, if I go to use that path copy tool again, it's not going to work here because it's, well, it's not going to work very well because this axis here is off to the side. So um, here, I'm going to put, put kind of feel weird being in the pool. I feel like I'm swimming. So I'm going to put this back over here. So I feel like I'm not swimming. Um, so what you could do is because that axis is off there, if you go to try and use that sort of um, copy extension, it's going to mess up. So what I want to do is instead come over here to another extension by TomTom called Axis Tools. And so what it's going to do, say set origin for selected. Well, I want to array this from the center. So I'm going to say center, center, bottom because that's where I want this array point to, to line up using path copy. I'm going to click OK, and then um, it should have done it. Was it not selected? Extensions, access tools for selected, center, center, bottom. OK, there it goes. So I've hit X-ray. You can actually see inside that now I moved the axis inside. Um, that was pretty cool without having to go in and say place axis. So from there, I can measure this because what I want to do is I want to run that. So that's one foot eight inches. So that's 20 inches. So what I would do is come over here and I'm going to offset that again by um, half of that, which is 10. Select this whole thing. Extensions, path copy. And we don't, we didn't look, we didn't do the math here. I'm just going to, I'm just going to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, 10, 11. I'm just going to equally space them just to keep things moving quickly. So I would grab this arc here. I don't know why I have to say. Do I have to? I don't have to say every step, do I? Can I just have a moment of silence and just work and just do it? Well, there's a lot of there's conversation going on in the comments section about uh, how architectural terminology is a great way to uh, learn something new and have fodder to annoy your friends with. Like fenestration, vernacular, building envelope. <laughs> it makes a sound. I've learned that it's, um, we use it in the architecture and design profession to sound, to kind of, sound like we have mystical powers. So we say stuff like, um, I can't even think of some, but I'll think of some good ones that just don't make, they don't mean anything to anybody else, but like the architects. It's your know. own version of uh, Wingardium Leviosa. Is that what there you saying? go. Yeah, it sounds a little bit, sounds a little Harry Potter-esque. So I'm going to take, um, I'm going to check the distance on this one, 56. And I'm going to say, I'm going to divide this one by 10. 56 divided by 10. Make sure I enter that as 5.6 feet. Extensions path copy that one and oh what happened there? Peter coming in and saying the railing pedestals are above every column, so you could just place by placing it in the column component, or just use the same layout you did for the columns. Oh, I love it when we've got people that are way um, when the people in the chat are with it. You know, that's awesome. Thank you. That's a great idea. If they line up with the columns, which I didn't even catch that one, two, they do. They line up with all the columns. That is, that is like, that is like a rookie mistake. This is why collaborating is such a great tool. Yeah. So what I want to do is I pretty much want it to be 
there. And it's a little bit tricky because I'm, it's a little bit tricky because, um, yeah, I want the center point of this to be right there. And I don't know what happened to my axis. My axis is still, it centered it, but it, it went off. That's what it did. It centered it, but then it rotated it because I'm not drawing this object. I did not make it a component in which is orthogonal to the axis. So that's why it's kind of screwed up there. So I'll leave that there so that we have a little bit of a recession. Copy that, come in here, paste it in place. And there we go. Bob's your uncle, as they say. I'd want to do the same thing here, though, wouldn't I? I'd come into this. This is why we're kids, folks. Working with components is the way to go. I'm channeling Dave, my Dave Richards. Those that you know Dave R., who's prolific on the forums. Unfortunately, he was not at this year's base camp. Um, so it would have been fun for all of us to sit around the campfire. And by campfire, I mean, you know, fake campfire, because we don't actually have a campfire in the conference center. Um, but sit around the metaphorical campfire and just pick his brain because that dude, um, he is an app. He, he, he loves using components. It doesn't look right though, does it? Probably because it's, it, probably because it just needs to be shifted. Shifted back. Shh, crickets chirping. I know this is the point when... Yeah, this is the point. Oh, it's because I have, that's because I have this one here. What I might want to do is go in and take those inside ones, if there's an inside one. And I may have to go in and say, actually, I want to um, make that one unique. Make unique. And come over there and just pull that out. That way I've got still a component. That's the same thing that's happening. Why do I have two over here? Same thing that's happening here. So what I would do is come over here probably and um, make this unique and pull this out. It's okay. It's okay, folks. So just for to make um, some people happy, it needs a little bit more work. I need to get the corner. I need to shift this in a little bit. And um, what we want to do is I want to fill this and then we'll call it done. I want to fill this with these... This will be kind of fun. Let me see if I can find a closer view of one. Probably can't get it from there. Where's a view where I'm kind of close, but I'm not. There we go. That's probably a good, maybe that's a good view. I don't know. It's hard. It's hard you know, because... speaking of Julia Morgan. There you go. Uh, Thanks. Well, interesting while I'm doing fact... this, you go for it. Yeah. Another interesting fact is that it was the 1906 earthquake and fire in San Francisco that launched her career. So with her background in civil engineering and knowledge of reinforced concrete, she was sought after for her expertise and many of her buildings actually survived the disaster while the rest of the city crumbled and burned. Oh, it's kind of sad, but kind of cool for her, huh? On that note, although the exact number of uh, Julia Morgan projects is unknown, uh, during her career, oh. it's believed that she designed more than 700 buildings, most of which were constructed. Yeah, that's pretty insane. I mean, I think that we, like for this example here that I'm doing, um, I think she's you know well known for Hearst Castle, but I think at the same time, she, um, she's done so many other things. You know, got to remember that too. Also, because it's, you know, again, I think that part of this, the kickoff here was for me, the interest was not just that it's a cool project, it's a cool pool, um, but also because 1.02, but also because it is, you know, International Women's Week. And I know that being, being in this profession for a little bit, I know that it still tends to be, depending on where you live and where you work, it still can be a bit male dominated. And I think that that's just something that, you know, it takes time, but I think we're all we're all doing the best we can to sort of, you know, change that. And um, I think by, you know, again, credit where it's due. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. So just wanted to sort of reinforce that. Somebody asked in the comments, uh, what's the average number of constructed buildings an architect has under their belt? 
I don't know. Does anyone on the chat want to answer that one? I don't want to answer that one. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to. I'm not sure. I guess I could look it up. Well, that's a good question because, you know, when you get big, you're not like I'm thinking Bjarke um, angles in speaking of when you get big. Um, I didn't really mean to do that, but it worked out. Uh, the Garys and stuff, you know, they're not as hands on, I think, as as when you're starting your firm and stuff. So when you say designed, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, well, what is that? You know, how do you define that? Because it could be that they're just putting their name on it after a while, you know, having after being in this you know, profession for a long time. So on that note, I need to, what I wanted to do is create, and I think I'm going to do this on axis. So I'm going to do it off to the side. I just wanted to grab this measurement really quick. See, see it's bouncing around because I, I'm, 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 I don't like that. And Aaron's in his head again. He's saying, get, just learn the space mouse. And in, in my head, I'm answering him. So if you hear me saying, yeah, that's on my list. Um, but until then, I'm just going to keep, I'm just going to bug, bug you guys and model an axle. So what I wanted to do is just measure this really quick and just kind of get a sense. I can scale it after the fact, but that's three feet. So what I want to do is just draw a line that's three feet. And I want to make sure that I'm drawing, where'd that line go? Where did I draw that line? Doesn't matter, I could do it here. Just do it on the roof, model on the roof. I want to go up. I want to draw a line that's up three feet because what I'm going to do is do is the follow me tool uh, to do a profile. So I'm going to do that same technique that we did before that sort of Tyson, I'm going to call it the Tyson technique, even though it may or may not be. Split that in half, and I'm going to look at this. This looks to me like it's got a kind of a curve, and it kind of comes around to the middle, and then it just mirrors itself and it flips over. So if I draw something that looks like this, I'm going to come down a little bit, and then what I'm going to do is go over just a little bit, and then I think it's got somewhere around halfway, it's got a curve. Oh, that's not. I want to do halfway because I want to flip this over because I want to mirror it. Huh. I don't so know. So according I'm to just some preliminary Google research, uh, architects in smaller firms may work on 15 projects a year, while in larger offices, they may just work on one or two projects every couple of years. Huh. So she must have been cranking out. That's a lot. Buildings like crazy. That is, yeah, it's even more impressive. I can imagine. I mean, I feel like if I was, if I had my shop, I would probably be able to do, I don't know, three or four a year. I mean, if you're really doing it, I mean, if you're taking it to construction documents and you're getting it built, that's, that's different than just designing buildings. Designing buildings is easy. I wouldn't say it's easy. It does take, and I'm not downplaying, you know, what, what we what we do um, in our profession. It's it's a lot of work, but I do want to say that if you're just coming up with concepts versus you know getting it constructed, there is a difference there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I want to take and she these was here. on site, not only coming up with concepts, but working to make sure that it was getting constructed. Yeah. Yeah. And I think she used her a lot of her European experience, and that's why you can see all of the sort of classical influences. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know that I can fit six in between there. Sorry about that. Lost my view there. Is it because it needs to be skinnier? Or did I draw these too fat? Uh, got a comment saying, looks, uh, looks a bit chunky, Eric. Yeah, thanks. Hey, that's, you got to be, you know, I'm sensitive with my figure when you say that it's my modeling is chunky. So you got to, a little sensitive. I'll try and not be too sensitive. So it almost like wants to punch out more. So the problem with stretching it is that I lose that curve, right? So it needs to be smaller, but it needs to be, um, still have sort of a more pronounced bulbousness of it. But we're going to go with this. We're going to go. We're going to go with it. And I'm just going to take just ever so slightly this bend. Actually, you know what? At this point, you probably wouldn't even be able to tell. If I just came over here and I just pushed this right up against this edge and I grabbed here and just went like that, 
I'm because I'm going fast and I'm being divide that by five. You know, I don't think anyone from a distance you won't be able to tell. Oh yeah, from a distance it'll look great. Just don't look yeah. at it close up. And then I'm going to set the axis on that one just to kind of so. It, oh no, I said set the axis. Maybe I won't. So then this is the thing where it's like, I have this component group here. So technically I could come in here and paste that in place. It's gonna paste it in all of them in the center, which actually saved me a little bit of time. But the problem with that is I'm using the same columns on the back. And so you'll notice that the spacing doesn't work. So I can't see the back here, but I'm wondering if, if this whole thing is being spread out. We have two choices. Is that we can either fit more of them on the back side or they're gonna have the same number, like the columns, like the, I've already counted this. We have the same number of columns, but you'll notice that the columns behind are wider and the columns in front are actually um, a bit, um, they're closer together because it's spreading out as it goes out from the center of the circle. I have to decide whether or not I'm gonna go in and make these unique and spread them out or put more of them in. What do you think? What does the group think? Either way, I've gotta make these unique because I have to fix these, I can't, you know, leave them as is. But here's the little trick here. Oh, hmm. yeah, okay. I'm just gonna do it. And then I'm gonna make uh, this unique. I'm just gonna explode it. Amanda from the chat says, more. More, instead of spread them out further. We got one vote for more, one vote for spread. Oh, you're taking a poll? I love that you can take polls. All right, I've got so much more to do on this and I'm not, I'm gonna be the honest uh, and, and say that it's it's not as good as it should be. Uh, I think the, the fun thing about learning and getting better as a professional and as an individual is not always to focus on what you know, but also admit what you don't. And I think this would be something that, that I would, um, possibly do an entire segment of, meaning that I would just do, if I was to do this over again, I might actually take this whole segment and do that detailed along using the pro, using that profile um, technique to get more detail in the profile, and then array that segment over, knowing that the two on the ends, the end caps are unique. And then that way, anything I do inside of here, anytime I edit this column, if I move this column, right? I mean, yes, I'm affecting the column, but if I moved it, it's 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 moving just the columns, right? Whereas if I split this whole thing, knowing that this is symmetrical and it spreads out and uh, as it goes away from the center, its center point over here, um, I could have just created like a pie, like a slice of pie, and then and then arrayed it or a, a ring of a donut because there's a hole in the middle here, and then just arrayed that. That's probably how I would have done this if I would have done it the first time, failed and then learned from my mistakes. So we've got about um, 20 minutes or so, and I did not get nearly as far. I said, I warned everybody today that, you know, we're, you know, I'm looking out the window, hoping that the electricity stays on and the house doesn't flood. So, so far, so good. Um, but that's, you know, that's why I'm just having a little bit of an off day today. I'm gonna use that as an excuse. The, um, where do we wanna go from here? I'm gonna pop back to the location snapshot really quick and just bring that back in. So whether I wanna go to my trace view or whether I just want to go to my working view and turn my location snapshot back on. Back on. And just kind of start to see how that how that looks. And if I wanted to here, this is kind of fun, I could unlock this, I could explode this, intersect this face with model. Uh, that didn't work. I could do that, copy that up. And then make that, um, are those components? Oh, explode those. I'll show you why I'm doing that. Why are you exploding those? Don't do that. Don't do that. The reason why is because what I wanted to do was drape this. So I'm going to go pull up my sandbox tools, view, tool palette, sandbox. And I want to drape this onto my terrain. And if I did that correctly, um, I could go in and delete this and delete this. Uh, 
And I'm, this time I'm going to actually, I am going to do that. I'm going to group those and I'm going to, I am going to explode those. I, I drew it once just to draw it once, but I don't think there's any advantage for me um, for right now at this point to because uh, to leave this as a component because if I'm going to do the tile work and stuff I'm maybe not going to do it in quarters I'm going to do it as you know the tile work separately around it so in this case I could come in here and paint bucket grab this texture come in here and do that I would like to um, I would like to on my own when I have time is actually do draft the pattern and I'm not going to make um, our our friends at home watch me do that because that would be kind of boring a lot of it is repeated uh, it's just kind of a, a repetitive element but I really like how this tile it almost looks as if they're sitting on top of each other right as opposed to the two corners of the diamonds coming together they actually kind of do almost like an overlap like an optical illusion thought that's a pretty nice detail so it would be fun actually just to draft this in this case you'd only have to draft a quarter of it I think and then mirror it around as opposed to do what I did and just pop in uh, pop in a texture. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah. So Donovan, you're learning. I mean, I know you know SketchUp and, and you've got, um, you know, you use it for sort of your specific things that you... Mm -hmm. um, but what what um, what's your favorite thing that you've learned, not necessarily in this session today, but, you know, in general? Like, what are some things that you didn't know before and that you know now? That you're excited um, to actually, put to test? What, what you just did, I find fascinating. Of taking a terrain, popping in the model in the terrain, and then adding that that design on the inside of your model. I was I was watching you do that. I'm like, that is cool. Oh, you I mean to pull that. out to piece out the? Oh, so yeah. I did this on the yeah I did this on the flat. But if I was actually doing this proper. Um, I would actually do it on the terrain, but right now I'm just going to model on the flat. But what I would do is I would build up the retaining wall, right? So we, so when I build this, yep. I would drop this whole thing down. So I'm only, I'm only doing it on the flat because this is a flat deck. The pool deck has to be level, right? I mean, it's sloped to drain, but we're going to call if it's two percent. I call two percent flat uh, because you're not going to model two percent. That's just a waste of time. Um, so in this case, I'm going to say that's flat. And then what you would do is you would take that deck and you'd place it in. So maybe I'll spend. Um, yeah, maybe if people entertain me, I'll spend a few minutes drafting the deck, and um, and then I'll just you know I'll work on this. I'll just keep working on it. I know I wanted to do this little um, fake Parthenon, what I call fake, because it's just a, the facade. Um, it, so I know that when you're standing here, when you're coming off these steps and you stand here, it's it's put there specifically to stop your eye, right? I mean these views are amazing. Sorry, this is not SketchUp related. I'm just you know just gonna geek out for a second, but. This was done intentionally, right? So when you're up here, you get this, you you descend from the house into the pools and you see that, this layering. And there's a term in landscape architecture called borrowed views. So in a way, it's almost like using the water and then the horizon and the mountains and sort of bringing those all together to sort of extend the view out. So what she's doing there in this case though, is she's framing the views using this colonnade, but in this case, she's stopping the view. So she's saying, actually, when you're standing here and looking down and straight across, she wants the eye to stop and not continue. So that was done intentionally, which is why this isn't actually a functional building at this point. It's actually like what we'd call folly. Um, so if you know, that's a term, um, since we're on classical architecture terms. A folly is um, an ornamental building with no practical purpose, especially a tower or a mock gothic ruin built in a garden or a park. So those were really big in English gardens. They would put these like fake castle ruins and stuff like that, um, which is pretty sweet. So on that note, again, learning new stuff all the time. On that note, I'm going to, um, I'm going to draft. I'm going to draft a little bit. I'm just going to, I'm just going to wing it. I'm just going to wing it. You can, you can, you can hear, maybe hear from the, um, from our fine folks at home, if anyone's got anything that they want to share in the last um, 15 minutes or so before we reach a, a decent stopping point. We have a comment, just had a comment coming in saying, I love this content. <laughs> it's funny because it's, I'm trying to place what this is when I was thinking like my background's landscape. And I know that um, I watched Aaron, he did a really cool 
um, building, contemporary building. And I was like, yeah, I don't really try to do buildings like that. So I was like, I should do a building. And we were talking about it this week. It's like, I want to do a building. And that's when, oh, um, Julia Morgan, Women's Month, Hearst Castle. But then I was like, no, oh, I still kind of stayed within my safe zone. The fun thing about this is it really starts to blur the line between the details. We're going in and we're drawing these little tiny details, but then we're thinking about this context, this larger environmental context. And that's what, you know, I'm not going to we all know we've all drank the Kool-Aid, the SketchUp Kool-Aid, or else we wouldn't be on this chat. But that's what I love about SketchUp is that I can almost seamlessly go between the smallest of detail and the largest of context within the same, not only the same breath as I, as I speak to it, but within the same, um, you know, session here. That's what, that's what gets me, just gets me out of bed every day. This Trent, is... Someone in the comment is saying that Follies are big in France too. Started oh, yeah. about the 18th century. Thanks, Transom. Love it when you guys and gals at home have something to add, whether that's correcting me or just you know building on that idea. And uh, speaking of Orson Welles. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You haven't even mentioned Citizen my, Kane. Did anyone in the chat my, mention this? My segues, yeah. Oh, my gosh. No, no, nobody mentioned it. I can't it. believe you guys I'm went just... this long and haven't mentioned, like, the Citizen Kane. Yeah. Uh, for those that don't know, Orson Welles, uh, his film, Citizen Kane, was actually based on William Randolph Hearst, whose uh, name is attributed to, to this castle. Uh, Hearst in response to the film Citizen Kane, actually tried to buy the film and destroy all the negatives. Uh, he wasn't able to, and later he said in response as to why he invested in journalism instead of film, which could reach a global audience, he said, I thought of it, but I decided against it because you can crush a man with journalism, but you can't with motion pictures. And yet, it turns out, actually, um, it turns out that that film sort of ruined both of their lives in a way because um, the film did get released eventually, as we all know, Citizen Kane. He, he, uh, it only won an Oscar. They pretty much, um, I don't want to say, um, they pretty much boycotted uh, the film because, because William Randolph Hearst was that powerful. Uh, he basically could, you know, control, in a way, he controlled Hollywood. And so um, what it meant was is that instead of getting the 20 Oscars or something that it should have gotten. It got one for best screenplay, basically as a nod to the um, to the screenplay writer, the co-writer. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, it was just crazy because uh, I studied film in college and everybody has this universal opinion that Citizen Kane is one of the greatest movies of all time. It's funny. It's not one you want to watch a lot. I'll be honest with you. It is pretty amazing. It is pretty spectacular, you know, piece of filmmaking. But at the same time, it's like, it's not like what I would, it's not my go to. Oh, let's watch Citizen Kane again tonight. So be curious if there's anybody else out there who's like, yeah, I watched it twice this week. Okay, what I'm trying to do, I kind of made a mistake. I exploded that pool group in order to get that pool texture. And then what I forgot to do was go in and, um, you know, regroup that. So what I'm doing here is I also have to remember, um, I have to remember that just because these are here doesn't mean that they um, are representing line work because they're groups. So I would normally put them on a tag and turn them off when I don't need them, assuming they're done. They're not done. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just hide them for now. Oh, did I not? Well, this is a fun little trick. Actually, my mistakes, I like my mistakes because sometimes they give me a chance to, to showcase something. I copied this upper part, but not the lower part, the plinth or the steps. So what I'm going to do is copy that now and then I'm going to come in, I'm going to delete it, and then I'm going to come into this, because this is a component, I did remember to make that a component, and then I'm going to go edit, paste in place. And so when I paste it in place in one, it's going to copy it to the other. So the cool thing about that is if I screw up and I forgot to include something, this is my way to include it. Delete it, copy it, delete it, paste it in place. And then that's how I move stuff in between. I can move things around the model literally by moving a component and then placing something into a component, almost like as a temporary, um, just as a way to move something from one place to another without having to, to rotate and get it in the right position. So I, in this case, I may not have even needed this. I may have only wanted the step and I would use the rest of that as a way to put the step in the right location. 
So with that said, I want to turn that, I want to just hide these for right now, because what I want to do is figure out, um, uh, okay, I do have some hidden geometry, that one, it's J, N, save, where is the, oh, I turned the save. locations. Save, I, yeah. I have, I have forgotten to remind you. Okay. I'm slacking. No, it's okay. I think what I did was, I think I, when I exploded this, um, I forgot, I need to put this back on the location snapshot because when I exploded it, I'm not doing this properly. You don't want raw geometry. You can see that even though it's hidden or turned off, if it's exploded, what I'm drawing is still interacting with it, even though it's hidden or turned off. And so in my head, it's like I made a I, I, I did explode it temporarily to do the drape, but then I didn't go back and fix it. So lessons learned, folks. Yeah. Question coming in from the comments about uh, different ways of, of duplicating objects in SketchUp, kind of what you were doing. Um, I guess they're asking what are, how, how do we, what are the different ways to duplicate objects in SketchUp? Hang on one second, because I'm I'm lost myself. Okay, I see why. Just I just had to fix a mistake. Thank you. Okay, I turned the background on because I know some of you. Um, it doesn't bother me. I actually um, let me answer that in a second. But I just wanted to say I turned the background to gray because when you're drafting and if your face style like mine is white. It may be difficult to see unless you're drafting on top of an image, which I was there for a little bit when I had my location snapshot. But uh, if you're drafting white, if you have white faces on white background, you, you might not be able to see it. I actually think the better thing to do, to be honest with you, in the styles menu is instead of turning the background gray, because I like white background, is to come into your face style and set your front color to something like temporarily like a gray um, or something like that. And what that's gonna do instead it, depending on your shadow settings, if your shadow settings are too bright, window shadows, depending on your shadow settings, what it's going to do is, there we go, there we go. I can see it that way. I can see, I'd rather see my faces and keep the background white. And I'll tell you why, because in um, I like to go into model, monochrome mode. Um, I like to go into monochromatic mode a lot, which means that I like to model and I like to um, view it in just pure white like that. So this is kind of um, a view guides, view axis. So when you do that, if you have a background color and you, if you have a background color, like if I switch this to gray so that you can see your face style better, when you go to monochrome, it makes everything that background color. So monochrome means background color. So if that's just, you know, for if I haven't explained it or if you're wondering why I'm like drawing white on white and that's confusing, I actually do that for a reason. And so sorry about that if that's so that way I can switch between seeing, you know, what's where my faces are and um, and that. And of course, from here, I can always come in and I can always um, paste. I can always paint on top of these. The nice thing about this is you can paint inside the component or you can paint outside of the component. So I can always change the color, even though my default face style is gray, I can always come over here and paint it white, you know, on top of that. Sorry, Donovan, that was a little bit of a tangent. That's because I was working through a problem. What would you, um, did you want to ask that question one more no, time? No, no, it's okay. okay. Working through the problem is how we're all learning together. So, yeah. So I wonder if this, I wonder if this deck, I need to pop back over to here. And then I think we're going to get close to just calling it. I know that we're not very far, but um, I, I, that's okay. So I want to see about how these steps work because you step up. Ah, I see what happened. You don't step up, you step down. I don't know if somebody had caught that and didn't call me out on it. So what you do here is you actually pull, this goes down and then I would come over here and I would bring this. I didn't draw this part, so I'm going to leave that there um, for now. I'll just leave it alone because I'm I'm going to mirror this. Uh, I'll do the deck once and then I'll mirror it. So I'll just, I'll deal with that. In fact, I'm just going to hide that for now, just so it doesn't distract me. Um, so what we need to do is we need to take the this part of the deck down. And the easy way to do that is probably to go in, grab the pool bottom, come over here, paste that in place, and then move that up 
That's why working in gr groups is great because I can paste stuff right on top of each other and I don't, I'm not afraid of, of it. That's why you don't want that raw geometry. Even if you're working here like this, you want to be careful. Um, sometimes you want to be careful and still group something like this. In this case, I might group that. And then I'll offset this. I know that that was, what was that? What did I use? Two foot? What does it take me to? Um, three foot? Three foot. I think that's, I think I did as three foot. 2.5 foot. All right, I'm going to say three foot, and then I might, I might have to change that. I might have to do that twice. So from there, what I can do is I can copy this and pretty much delete all this. I mean, that, this was all just temporary, and then come over here and then paste that in place. So th what's, what that's doing there is it's saying I can work in as a group, and then when I'm ready, I can come over here and grab that. And if I do this right, pull this down, duplicate it itself. Oh. Um, I know what I have to do. This is 10 foot from the water line, I'm assuming. So which means the water line, the pool itself, also needs to come down, right? All right, we're getting, getting close to time, folks, as you can see, as I'm just kind of goofing. Okay, so now, let's try that again. Now that I moved the pool down, I should be able to pull, um, I should be able to pull this down and have that sit there like that. You can see that my pool geometry was not, my pool arc was not as detailed as my um, stair arc for some reason. So if you wanted to, you could come over here and just um, move that manually. Or for this purpose of this, I would say, well, I would want to make sure that I'm using that same line. And in this case too, if I wanted to come back in and grab that again, go on the outside of the group. I'm going to go to monochrome for this. Group that, pull this up to, where's that water line? Where's that water line? Is it maybe six inches below that bottom step? Eight inches? Pretty Something close. Like so if I pull this up and then I come down, I'm gonna come down six because I like even, I just like working in kind of even numbers. And then I'm gonna pick a nice blue color, make this fairly transparent, and then come over here like that. And what did I do wrong? I see. Go into my group, paste that blue color there, and the cool thing about that is that even in um, is that even if I didn't, um, even if I didn't have that that texture, like if I wanted to draw the tile work in, I can go ahead and and have that. Like for example, um, if I hide this here, and I come into my textured mode, and for some reason I say, oh, I don't really like combining photo textures with you know geometry. Like so, I may just say, no, let's not do that. And I'll go ahead and paste. Um, and then I'll come back here and unhide that. So this is, I'm, you can see I'm about to call it. I'm going to create one more, my dashed layer. I'm going to turn that off. So my little temporary guides that I set up, I'm going to just going to grab that. Anything that I just kind of wanted to put in as a reference, I might want to keep that. That's totally fine. Paste that in place. Grab that center point. You know, if I feel like keeping it, just put it on that hidden layer. And there you go. Unhide. Lots more to do, folks. I appreciate everyone's um, appreciate everyone's patience today as we just kind of work through this. And um, next time, if anyone's been to Disneyland and Star Wars, I don't know if you guys know. Um, it's not Star Wars; it's now Star Wars. It used to be called Star Tours. Um, mm -hmm. For those that are sort of old school Disney uh, Disneyland people, uh, Star Tours. Little, that Star Tours. Cool. So the robot in the beginning, he says um, at the very end after, you know, basically taking them into like, you know, almost crashing the ship and getting them caught in the tractor beam and all that stuff. He basically says at the end, he says, I'm um, sorry about that, folks. You know, I know this was your first flight. And well, you know, it's or no, he says in the beginning, he said, no, this is your first flight. And it's uh, mine, too. Um, and then at the end, he says, I'll try and do better next time. So in my head, that's kind of what I'm saying to myself. I'm Star Tours is coming in saying. Do better next time, guys. Also, at the same time, I don't have to, I don't have to, I can say that this is, this is as good as it needs to be, if I wanted to. That's looking pretty good, Eric. I'm impressed, as always. Well, Donovan, you are, that's why I like working with you, because you're, you're supportive, you know, just the level of support that I need here in these days. Okay. <laughs> So 
if I want to, I could hide that. So you can see why I work above, right? I work above and then I drop down. So if I was doing trees and stuff like that and I wanted to put some people in as entourage, I would just start dropping that down. So I'm going to change my camera field of view. Uh, I'm going to change it to perspective and make sure that that's set at something nice and wide. It's set at 45 degrees. That's great. And I'm going to go ahead and just, um, I'm just going to kind of enjoy the view. I'm going to end this here with, I'm going to bring some of my friends. So I'm going to come over here to components and I have this little folder called 2D people. And I'm going to bring her because she's trying to get a picture of the view. And this guy, I'm not too happy with him. He's staring at his phone, checking his Twitter feed when he's not like he should be really, you know, soaking this in. But hey, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I'm going to take all these guys because they're because they're a little bit too colorful. I'm going to pull the extension, the color out of them, remove from the selection, and I'm going to give them just a kind of a nice charcoal color. Yeah. All right, Donovan. Yeah, I know a lot of people in the comments saying great work, Eric. Looks yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for your support, your comments, your help, your patience, and um, yeah, you know, it's something. I'm happy. I'm happy with generally, you know, the direction it's going. Definitely needs a little bit of work, a little bit more thought, but um, it's cool. I'm gonna press my little magic button over here. And Donovan, I'm going to say you're still on, you're still can talk, but I'm going to, I'm going to make you disappear. So I'm going to um, wrap us up. So I'm going to go big, go big or go home. We're going to do both. I'm going to go big and we're going to go home. Okay, everyone, we're at time, uh, just under two hours. You can see that, um, I don't know, SketchUp is, is almost like 80% thinking and, um, 20% modeling. I don't know if you guys caught that, but I was doing math a lot and I was thinking about how I would approach this and I was undoing stuff. The actual modeling itself, uh, moving things, copying things, offsetting things, arraying things, SketchUp makes that so easy for me. I've done it quite a bit. That's not the hard part. The hard part was like, how would I approach this? Um, but that's also the fun part. That's the challenge of what we're doing here is that there's more than one way to approach it. Uh, there's different extensions that we could use to speed the process up. And of course, if, uh, if I'm lucky, we can collaborate and I can say, hey, you do that and I do this and we'll merge the models and of course things will go by quicker. So I'm gonna leave you on that note. I'm gonna let Donovan, do we have any last fun facts that we wanna share about either Julia Morgan, our inspiration for this site or Hearst Castle, which is just really an absolutely amazing um, piece of property that I think uh, I would love to do more of um, in the future. Yeah, so Hearst Castle, um, for those who don't know, is also called the Enchanted Hill. It's known as, I'm going to butcher this again. I'm so sorry. La Cuesta Encantada. <laughs> That's, I'm, I'm so embarrassed. Uh, but it is known as the Enchanted Hill. And as for uh, Julia Morgan herself, in 2014, uh, 50 years after her death, she was awarded the AIA Gold Medal for Architecture becoming the first woman, woman to uh, receive that prestigious honor. That's cool. So cheers to working in SketchUp. Cheers to, to my co-host. Cheers um, to all of you out there watching. And um, yeah, cheers to all the um, all architects around the world. And this month, especially the our women architects, which I know they're not represented in voice, but they're represented in spirit here uh, on this thread. So. Here's the Enchanted Hill. Speaking of which, there's the rest of it. I went ahead and puts a little bit more into it so we can, um, you know, bite off the next part of the project next time. So housekeeping items, I'm gonna wrap up the last minute. I'm gonna say, say your goodbyes, everyone on the thread. I wish I could chat with you. I'll chat with you next week when somebody else is modeling. So thanks for letting me be your host. Thanks to Donovan for co-hosting all those fun facts. Makes me wanna go see Citizen Kane. Also makes me wanna make the trip out here when the flooding is done. It's not too far from my house. Maybe I'll go visit. Uh, I will not swim in the pool because of the cost, uh, the price tag to get a members only um, <laughs> swim pass. I will not be yeah. doing that, unfortunately. I do want to also make sure, as always, I want to plug um, our other learning channel. So if you're new to this live stream, make sure to also check out our SketchUp. We've got two new, if you haven't seen it, we've got two new um, SketchUp 
YouTube videos coming out. The first one on Tuesday is called Level Up SketchUp, and that's basically the same thing we've been doing in the past with our skill builders, but now we've changed it a little bit because we're gonna focus purely on SketchUp native tools, and on Thursdays, we're gonna go beyond desktop, and we're gonna look at things like extensions, we're gonna look at interfacing between different programs, and we're gonna look at just basically a lot of things that, um, that just go beyond the capabilities, things like rendering with V-Ray, and other visualization tools that go beyond um, SketchUp's native capabilities. So that's new. So keep an eye out for those. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, do that so you get these notifications. Also on this video, this is gonna be, uh, if you missed it um, or if you came in late, we're gonna post this to our YouTube channel as well so you can catch the rest of it. Um, and be sure to, um, yeah, be sure to say hi and leave your comments. Let us know what you think. We read those comments, we reply to them. We'll keep our conversation going there. And if we don't see you here on YouTube, we'll see you over at SketchUp Campus, which is where I spend the rest of my time when I'm not here with you at learn.sketchup.com. So thanks everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and press play our awesome music now. See you next time.